welcome to Tikabilla. Now, have you noticed I'm missing something today? I've got a top on and I'm wearing trousers and I don't need to wear a hat in the Tikabilla house and I certainly don't need a jumper. But there is something missing. Can you guess what it is? My shoes! Tambra and I are going to sing a song all about dressing up. Hello, Sarah Jo. Hello. Hello. Ellie and Teddy are over there. Can we dress them? Yes, let's. Come on. Oh, Sarah Jane, you haven't got any shoes on. <laughs> I know, Tam, but that's because I thought that I could put my shoes on at the beginning of our dressing song. OK, and then we can dress my toys. Good idea. <laughs> this is the way we put on our shoes, put on our shoes, put on our shoes. This is the way we put on our shoes on a cold and frosty morning. And this is the way we put on a top, put on a top, put on a top. This is the way we put on a top on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we do up a button, do up a button, do up a button. This is the way we do up a button on a cold and frosty morning. And this is the way we put on a skirt, put on a skirt, put on a skirt. This is the way we put on a skirt on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we brush our hair, brush our hair, brush our hair. This is the way we brush our hair on a cold and frosty morning. And this is the way we put on a hat, put on a hat, put on a hat. This is the way we put on a hat on a cold and frosty morning. Ha -ha. Oh, Tamba, don't they look nice? They do. I really like Ellie's skirt. Yes, purple's such a great colour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tamba, in some parts of our country, men wear skirts as well as women. Do they? Yes, they do. In Scotland, men wear a kind of a skirt. Ah. Oh. Do we know anyone from Scotland? Yes, we do, Tamba, and he's got something special for us. Ha-ha! Now, this is a kind of a skirt. It's called a kilt. Oh, wow! Yay! Isn't it great? <laughs> now, this is worn by some people where I come from, Scotland. Wow! And, and does your kilt keep you nice and warm, Paul? Uh, well, it does, you know, because it's made of quite a warm material. It's made of wool, so it is quite cosy. Wow. And, and when would you wear? Your kilt, would you wear it all the time? <laughs> no, I wouldn't wear a kilt all the time. But if I was going to a special occasion, such as a dance or maybe a wedding, then I could wear my kilt. Ah, and what's that on the front of your kilt? Well, this is called a sporran. And a sporran is used to keep things in because a kilt doesn't have any pockets. So I can put everything I need into my sporran. I see. It's a nice pattern on your kilt, Paul. <laughs> Do you like it, Tamba? This pattern is called tartan. Tartan has lots of different colours. You see it's got green and blue and black. And these lines are yellow and white. And they go down and across. Now, lots of families in Scotland have their own tartan. I think we're going to see how tartan is made through one of the windows today. Let's have a look and see. How many windows? One, two, three. Round, square or arched, which one will it be? It's the square window. Leslie is using a computer to draw a design for her tartan. She has decided that the tartan will be red with a white check in it. Check means that the cloth will have lots of different coloured lines that cross one another. Can you see the checked lines? When Leslie has decided what the tartan should look like, they start to make the cloth. Ronnie starts by putting wool into a dyeing machine. The wool goes in white, and comes out red. Tartan cloth is made from lots of different coloured wool. What colours can you see?
Each bundle of wool, or it's called a bobbin, needs to be tied onto the next piece. When all the bobbins have been tied together, Dick then ties all the ends of the wool onto a machine called a warping machine. Can you see that all the lines are going from the top to the bottom of the cloth at the moment? The warping machine turns around very fast, which keeps the wool stretched out and tight. Sometimes the wool is stretched too much and it snaps. When this happens, Dick has to find the piece of wool which has snapped and tie it back together in a knot. We'll see that knot again later. There, the machine is ready to go again. This machine is called a loom. Do you remember that the lines were only going from top to bottom before? Well, this loom is putting in the lines that go from side to side. There is our bobbin of red wool. And it is making a red stripe that goes from one side to the other. Some Scottish families have decided that they would like to have a tartan named after them. This tartan is named after the Fraser family. Do you remember when the wool snapped and Dick had to tie a knot in it? Well, Kate is mending that knot. Oh, that's it. This mending is called darning. All these ladies are darning little problems in the tartan. It is possible to make almost anything from a piece of tartan. And if your family name is Fraser, then maybe you would like a tie made from Fraser Tartan. Tartan's great, isn't it? Didn't Paul look smart in his kilt? Now, tartan can be used for all sorts of things like making curtains or decorating chairs and boxes, as well as for kilts. Now, I thought that we could make our very own Tikabilla tartan, and I'll show you how. What you need are some long strips of different coloured paper, a plain white sheet of paper, a brush and some water. And I've also got some paper underneath because it can get a little bit messy. Now, first of all, you dunk your brush into the water and you just paste water all over like that, which is great fun. There we are. Hmm. Now, I wonder what colours our Tikabilla tartan should be. Well, there's orange and red in the Tikabilla house, isn't there? So I think that might be quite nice. And what about yellow? I think that'll be lovely. Now, can you see I've really wet this paper all over like that? And now for the exciting bit. Get a strip of paper. Do you know what colour this one is? Yellow. And put it on the paper. And the water, if you press it down, will make it stick to the paper. Now then, another colour, I think. Orange. And if you put the orange next to the yellow, across the paper like that, there we are, and I think more yellow, don't you? 
Oh, now this is going to be an interesting, bright tartan, I think. Another orange. Pop that there and press it down. There we are. And one more colour, yellow. Now, when you've done that, more water and you paint over the top of the tissue paper. There, like that, all over. It's a bit like decorating, really. It's great fun. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the water makes the colour in the tissue paper start to run, which gives it a great tartan look. Now then, do you remember what Paul said about tartan? It goes across, like this goes across, and it also goes from the bottom to the top. I've got some other colours here. I've got some nice reds, and so I'm going to put them across the tartan to make a crisscross shape. Another piece of red there. There we are. Like that. That's great. Oh, look! And a secret piece of red there. In fact, I might just peel that up and move it along. And that's the great thing about this, because if you put it in the wrong space, you can just move it along. Now, then, more water. And now you can really see the colours are starting to run onto the paper. Now, then, once you've got all of the tissue paper really wet, what you need to do is leave it to dry because later this is what happens. Look, this is some dry tartan that I made earlier and if I just peel back the dry tissue paper like that, <gasps> look at that pattern, our very own Tickabilla tartan. Sarah Jane, look what you've made. This looks great. I really like it. <laughs> this would make a great kilt. What do you think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really good. What else could you use it for, I wonder? Uh, Maybe wallpaper. That's a good idea. <gasps> I think it's time to see what the Tickabilla clock says. Will you say the rhyme with me? Tickabilla, tockabilla, tickabilla, tock. What's the time on the Tickabilla clock? Well, now, the long hand is pointing to the number nine. So that means that it's a quarter to something. And the short hand is pointing to just before the number two. So that means that it's a quarter to two. Now, what's below the Tickabilla clock today? It's a pasting brush and some wallpaper. I think someone must be doing some decorating. Justin, what are you going to do first? Ah, wallpaper! Where are you going to put it?
fucking on, haven't you? by the Tickabilla farmhouse. <laughs> there are lots of things in it. Mm, let's see. There are some flowers and hedges. That's where the blackbirds live. And there are lots of animals everywhere. And over here is a brown field that's just been ploughed and the pigs are playing in it. <laughs> Can you make a piggy noise? <laughs> ah, what about a sheep noise. <laughs> Did you join in? <laughs> Ooh. I know some children who have animals in their garden too. Let's take a look. How many windows? One, two, three. Round, square or arched? Which one will it be? This is Sam, and this is Finn. 
They like exploring their very special garden. Today they're playing at the bottom of the garden. What have they got there? It's a hole. What could have made that hole? I think a badger made this hole. Our dad told us because he'd seen it before that it was a badger hole. The badger's underground home is called a set and has many tunnels. It stretches under several people's gardens and has many different entrances. So far we've counted about four badger holes entrances. There's about three over there and this is the fourth. The set is made up of lots of tunnels. Dad says the badgers sometimes cause damage with their digging, so it's better if they're kept to the bottom of the garden. How do they know when the badgers have been out? You look for tracks or um, marks of where they've like scratched the ground or something. Badgers are very shy. They only come out and look for food at night. The boys like to feed the badgers even though they don't see them. Well, we put peanuts there because they'll smell them and they'll come and eat them. If they were scavenging underground, they'd look for earthworms. The badgers don't always come out into Sam and Finn's garden. Sometimes they go into their neighbour's garden. This is what happened the other night. A special night camera waits for the badgers. There they are, Sam and Finn's badgers, sniffing around for food in the garden of the house next door. It films them in black and white, not colour. It's hard to pick up the colours when it's dark. And there's another animal. It's a fox. They are much more common than badgers. They're shy too, so they're still not easy to see. And here's the badger again. Even though it's dark, you can clearly see her stripy face. She's looking around for food in the grass. Because it's dark, badgers use their noses to sniff their way around the garden. This badger is staying close to the bushes, where he can hide if there's danger. And there's the other one, not far from where Sam and Finn were sitting just now. Under the bushes there are plenty of slugs, snails and particularly worms, which the badgers love. So when Sam and Finn are asleep, badgers and foxes come out looking for food in their garden and the next door neighbour's gardens. Aren't Sam and Finn lucky to have badgers and other animals living at the bottom of their garden, even if they aren't awake to see them? So Sam and Finn didn't see the badgers in their garden, but they knew they had been there. That's right, because hmm. badgers sleep all day long and only come out of their set at night. Ah, they wouldn't make very good pets. <laughs> no, they wouldn't, and you certainly couldn't play with them. Mm, no, do you have a pet, Sarah Jane? Yes, I do. I have two cats. Ah, oh, what colour are they? Well, they're a toffee colour and they look like they've got white socks on, they've got blue eyes and they're called Mufasa and Aslan. Wow. Ah, oh, and what about you, Paul? Do you have a pet? No, I don't, but if I did, I'd like to have a giraffe. <laughs> You'd need a very tall house. You're right up, I would. <laughs> Do you have a pet? I know, shall we play a game about guessing which pet we'd all like to have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, and when you know which pet it is, shout it out loud! Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I have got an animal, and that animal is my pet. I feed him, and I stroke him, and I take him to the vet. <gasps> He's got four legs and a big wet nose. Have you guessed it yet? Have you guessed what animal, what animal is my pet? Have a think. He likes to chase a ball. 
He comes to me when I call. And even though I've lots of friends, he's my bestest friend of all. Have you guessed it yet? <coughs> yes, a dog is my pet. I have got an animal, and that animal is my pet. I feed her and I stroke her, and I take her to the vet. She's got sharp claws and a whiskery nose. Have you guessed it yet? Have you guessed which animal, which animal is my pet? She would never think twice about chasing after mice. And when she's curled up on my lap, she feels warm and oh, so nice. Have you guessed it yet? Meow. Yes, a cat is my pet. I have got an animal, and that animal is my pet. I never ever stroke it, cause it's always far too wet. <laughs> it's got no legs, but it's got a tail. Have you guessed it yet? Have you guessed what this one is? Have you guessed my pet? Hmm. Well, this is what I found as it goes around and around. Its mouth is often open, but it never ever makes a sound. Have you guessed it yet? Mm, yeah! A goldfish is my pet. <laughs> there are lots of different animals, and not all can be pets. Like lions in the jungle, and badgers in their sets. And some like to live with us, which I think's fair enough. If we give all our animals food and warmth and love. Oh. oh, that's great. Why don't you pretend to be a dog? Or a cat. <laughs> or a fish. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Bye.